In part one of our Warcry Catacombs unboxing, we focused on the models and their abilities. Now, in part two, we're taking a look at everything else, especially the new bits of scenery, the new game board, and the Catacombs book. We've also finished building the new minis and terrain, so we'll show that off. There's nothing too new here, so we're going to rush through it. The box is chunky, split by a divider poster which keeps the printed elements safe from potential scraping. It's the norm for GW games now, we like it. They fit a lot in these big boxes, and it always seems to stay in pretty good condition. Standard Warcry dice are included in their three different colours, along with clear range rulers and a punch sheet of tokens that you'll need to play. If you got the original Warcry box, or other Warcry bits, you'll have these things already. And you'll also have the original rules, which are another repeat here, but one that we'll talk about shortly. First, let's take a look at the cards. The stats of models and their warbands abilities are listed on the usual style of Warcry cards, and these are designed with the same high quality layout that's across everything in the box. But we're going to get a little picky, and with high production values such as this, we reckon we probably should. The wording on these cards is not of such a high quality. Take the Beheading Strike ability's description. At half the value of this ability rounding up to the damage points allocated by critical hits from the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation that has a range characteristic of 3 or less. Whew, deep breath after that one. So, with a decent grasp of the rules, this long sentence does make sense, but it could certainly be clearer. For newcomers, office test showing it to non-Warcry gamers, it was met with wide-eyed stares and bewilderment. Yes, GW are trying to cover every possible rules permutation here, but extra punctuation or a different style of layout could have really helped make things clearer. We reckon that releases that follow up on existing games should be iterative things and improve on elements, and this really isn't doing that. It's similar to a lot of the slightly garbled text that we got on the original Warcry stuff. So that takes us on to the original rules. Catacombs is not an expansion only set. It acts as an all in one, everything you could need kind of game in a box, or at least it does in theory. So, if you've already purchased the original box game, or the original rules and extras, you'll be getting repeats of the bits we've already mentioned here, along with some repeat scenery, which we'll talk about in a bit, and a duplicate Warcry core book. That is quite a lot of repeats for a fairly hefty £125 cost and you can look on GW's site to see what that equates to in your territory. You're probably going to struggle to justify buying this box if you've got those things. You should wait for the Warbands, which will undoubtedly be sold separately, and wait for the Catacombs book and scenery, which hopefully will also be sold separately. As we said about the cards, we like when follow-up products iterate and improve. That doesn't seem to have happened here in this Warcry core book. Yes, it's the same atmosphere-laden, 160-page, softback, full-cover offering that looks great and has a good rule set. That's really good. But it also retains the same errors and rules that lacked clarity that were present before. And that is much less good. Taking us even further to a, hmm, I'm not really sure about that one type moment, is the fact that the unmodified core book has a second half, a campaign section of linked narrative battles, that's kind of unplayable out of the Catacombs box as is. These campaigns have fixed battlegrounds and they require specific scenery to match these specific terrain setups. New players won't have it. The scenery was included in the original Warcry core game, so it made sense. The lack of it here, it's potentially frustrating if Catacombs is your first Warcry purchase. And yes, the Catacombs book does mention this and offers alternatives. But that doesn't feel ideal, and we reckon maybe this could have been stated on the box somewhere. If not stated on the box, we do feel that the fact that the back of the box says everything you need to play feels slightly off. But moving to far more positive things, there's some really great scenery in here, and a really great board. The overground pieces are repeats from the first Warcry set consisting of a tower, a couple of ruins, and assorted barricades. They're really great, and we've honestly got no issue getting duplicates of scenery this nice. It's the new underworld dungeon bits that are really exciting though. The catacombs are clearly represented, with doors, bridges, underground objectives, and points of interest. You get two of this first scenery frame, 
packed with different doors and bridges. These have associated new rules, and we promise we'll talk about those as soon as we get to the Catacombs book. But for now, you can see that they're quite impressive bits. The bridges are all one part, with variations for rickety little wooden ones and much more sizable metal ones, while the doors, they're all simple constructions, mostly two part, and they have open and closed options and levers which you can use to open and close them. Now GW have been fans of the covered with skulls aesthetic for a long time now and is clearly still in vogue. Some of the skulls here are so plentiful and so small that we actually thought they were texture at first glance. And yeah, they are a texture, they're a scully texture. This is not a restrained or subtle look, but for underground chaotic ruins, it feels right. The second new scenery frame is a really chunky one, and it's got the objective scenery elements on it. There's a sewer and shattered pillars, which are single piece. The rest of the bits need to be built. They're not too complex, but instructions on how to do so are included. A detailed A4 leaflet showing how to build the terrain, as well as the far more complex warbands. Now that we've actually built those warbands in full, we can say without any hesitation that the guide is needed. The size of the flame aren't the worst models to make, but a couple of the shadow stalkers are tooth gnashingly fiddly. The terrain is much simpler to make, made up of a few pieces at maximum. Um, in a traditional, ah, oh, we missed a bit kind of style of big projects, the wall breach doesn't actually have any instructions in this guide, but it's a simple build, so it's not the worst thing. As well as that wall breach, there's an arm stash, which is covered with blades big enough to give Archaeon an inferiority complex. There's cursed caskets, which house skeletons and spookiness. Um, a collapsed doorway is a simple but really effective looking part. And we hope these all get released separately because they'll make for fine scatter terrain. As with the other terrain bits, um, there are unique rules for some of these features, and we will get to them very shortly, but first, the gaming board. This is a double-sided, foldable effort. It's made from thick card, and it measures 22 inches by 30 inches once you've laid it out. One side is in the familiar Warcry Overground style, the other shows vibrant, lava-lit underground passages and arena-style areas. And once you put your new scenery bits onto this um, infernal forge floor, it really is an instantly inspiring battlefield, and it's going to add new options to your games. The new Catacombs book is at the core of these underground battles. It's a 66-page softcover with high-quality, full-colour pages throughout. It starts with the Horrors Below section, which is background on the dungeons, the tunnels, and the underground systems that make up the game's eponymous location. There are two pages of intro, which also includes uh, the alternatives to how the core book terrain problems we mentioned earlier can, can be amended, and then there's a double page spread of the box contents. Once we get to page six, we're properly introduced to the game's main location, Varan Um Built into the skeleton of a long dead drake, belching up ash, burning with a suffocating superheated underground fire, decorated with magma and sulfur lakes that house fire demons, yep, this is prime chaos real estate. Atmospheric art and text sets the scene. There's a map across pages 10 and 11 that adds campaign possibilities for players. I know that I want to take a trip to see the no doubt friendly folks who live in the Chamber of Boiling Blood. Take a left at Skinny to Mists. If you reach the heart of the moor, you've gone too far, governor. Molten Realmstone is described, and that's the MacGuffin that's encouraging all warbands to visit this hellish place. A warping, refinable liquid that can create objects of power. Pages 12 to 13 introduce the two new warbands, the Silence of the Flame and the Shadow Stalkers. Then there's the Killers in the Depth section, which goes from pages 14 to 23, and it shows off the models. The imagery of painted minis and terrain here is really wonderful. The two new warbands are very present, as are the existing ones, and they're all fighting over gorgeous boards and terrain pieces. Inspiring stuff. Once we get to page 24, we're finally into the Tunnels of Death, and that's the rules. Dungeon Battles, which starts it off, is a summary of the new way to play. Um, the pre-game sequence has been changed slightly, uh, largely to use the new board, and there's victory cards and twists that have changed up a bit as well, but it's all pretty simple. New dungeon terrains added, unique dungeon features are placed, and so on. Though this book is specific to Warcry, there are some good ideas here, and they could be made to work across other systems, and bring flavour to fantasy, sci-fi, or even historical interior battles. 
One change to the normal game rules is that reserves work differently. They arrive as battle groups in the third round, and they come in through entrance tunnels that are determined by the battle plan card in play. This means that battle can really switch tempo at this point, the new combatants emerging at key points to bolster fights or counter striking elsewhere. The dungeon terrain section tackles the important aspect of walls first. These are outlined on the board with a thin red line, and they act as obstacles, offering the usual sort of cover bonuses and movement restrictions. They block visibility, but there's no specific attempt in the rules to include any universally active fog of war type of stuff. Um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it could certainly take the pace out of games, but maybe that would have been a nice extra here. Dungeon doors act as obstacles too, and they bring a wrinkle to the flow of battle. Open ones, they act pretty much as doors in the core book do, but no fighters are restricted by them. The sealed doors, they act as dungeon walls until they're opened, and that can be done by some abilities or the levers that you also get with the game. Pits are present, to be leapt over or fallen into, and bridges can be used to cross those pits safely. Well, relatively safely. Fighters can actually cause bridges to get weakened and they will eventually collapse. Unique dungeon features are represented by the new terrain in the box here. The arm stash boosts the attack characteristic of those within one inch of it, for example. The sewer acts as another entrance tunnel. The collapsed doorway can be put in place to replace a door on the battlefield, which opens up more traversal options. There are universal dungeon abilities too. Lurk in the shadows means that a fighter close to a wall is not visible to anyone more than six inches away. Breach door is a double ability, and that's how you can open closed doors. And then there's push into pit, which is a triple ability, and it is what it sounds like. It's a nasty way to take down an enemy. Some faction's rune marks provide more options. There's wall running, which is a hop over the enemy type fly action. There's float through wall, which allows you to make peekaboo type attacks. And running strike, that's a quad movement that allows an extra attack action after you've performed a wall run. And we really like the possible momentum shift that that could bring to combat. Alternate deployment cards are shown across pages 34 and 35. There's new victory cards on pages 36 and 37, which offer unique underground themed game goals. We're really keen on some of the new twists that come next. All of them are quite simple, but they'll be infinitely applicable mutators when used with the various deployment and reserve entry options. This means no two fights should be the same. From reserves, arriving early or late, doors and the air itself hurting or restricting your fighters, through to quirks like traps, which potentially trigger after activations, or emboldened warbands with more wild dice, there's much to enjoy. Pages 40 to 51 bring along new campaigns. They're the usual high quality Warcry stuff, but with dungeon themes in their stories and layouts. And the book ends with fated quests. Once again, dungeon flavour are plenty here, and it's a lot of gaming options for you to work through. So overall, there's no doubting that these plastics, along with the Catacombs book, are the things that new or existing Warcry players will be really hungry for. Unfortunately, if you are an existing player, you've probably already invested in the core game, so the extra bits here that you've already got mean that you should wait and get it on its own. The box is good, the new rules are fun, the new plastic bits are outstanding, but all those repeats, they really diminish the value. However, if you're new to Warcry, this box is a really good deal. We've done some guesstimating on what these things will cost individually, and you'll save a fair bit of cash overall. We do have some issues about the core book not getting an update, and some of the missing terrain options, but you're going to get some great games going on under the eight points with what's in here. And they're going to be fought on an outstanding looking board with some great terrain and some excellent warbands. So you're not really going to regret buying this set. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.